uh, teaching on houses of peace. We have a lot of good things going on. And, and uh, you know, it's just an exciting time. You know, our crime levels are down 20 percent, our violent crime levels, our murder down 20 percent as compared to last year. We got some momentum. We had about four or five people sign up for Houses of Peace just in the last couple of days. Uh, we spoke at Antioch Church, uh, pastored by Blake and Lena Satterley, and uh, really had a wonderful time. Holly Kim and yeah. I taught together, and it was really, it was a very beautiful occasion. Uh, very, very excited about the Houses of Peace. People were very, very uh, receptive. Mm. Very. They were very excited. We felt like we felt like we were stars or something. Like people want to take their picture with us. People came over, wanted to lay hands on us, pray for us. It was really lovely, you know. And you know, it was nice. Yeah, it was nice that you know. It was like, how do we get a hold of you? And you know, we don't have our name on anything, so <laughs> it's like, well, let me find a car. <laughs> but you know, they were really interested in transform our world, New Orleans, and. I met one of uh, uh, Rhonda's, uh, Rhonda mentored this girl in elementary. I misunderstood her when she said it because, you know, it was during church, but um, she realized I was with Rhonda and Rhonda was with us. I told a story about Rhonda. Yeah. So that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And she was so excited and we took our picture and sent it to Rhonda and just precious. And that's a really good church. If any of y'all want to try it, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing some good things and the community's small and really precious. And, you know, the leaders are really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. We enjoyed it. Yeah. So we give thanks for that. And uh, tonight we have, we have the, the, the teacher. We right. have the, my woman tonight. She's on. She's on tab. So she's going to uh, bring our lesson tonight. So without further ado, it's all yours, honey. Thank you. This is so pretty. <laughs> I'm like, I need more shine in my life, people. <laughs> well, you know how I am. Dean's like. Will you teach? Okay. So then today I'm like, okay, God, what am I teaching on? I start looking in the word, seeing what's going to pop out at me, you know, start praying, seeing what he's going to, what he wants to talk about. And um, he just kept saying the word peace, you know, peace, peace, peace. So, you know, being the old, you know, hippie, the peace. So as I was searching it, it, what was sticking out out of reading the scriptures, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, I uh, got stuck in the New Testament. That's what was jumping out. And, you know, it was interesting when I was reading Matthew 10, 12. So just in case y'all go and look for it. I know you got your phones or whatever, but I'm not going to be as like Dean. We're not going to have all the, all the extra. Sorry, guys. I'm not, you know, I'm not that advanced here, but Matthew 10, 12, as you enter the house, greet it. I just thought, wow. Jesus says, greet the house. He said, greet the people. Mm-hmm. He said, greet the house. Mm -hmm. And what I felt like he was saying was, it's not a home until you greet it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a big difference between a home and a house. You can walk into any house, but they don't all feel like a home. And I know you've been, maybe you've lived in a house that wasn't a home, or you lived in a home and went to someone's house and it wasn't a home. But I just, I just, it just jumped out at me when he says, as you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. Whose peace? Our peace. Let Mm -hmm. our peace come upon the house. Yes. Mm. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. But as I was thinking about that, here we are doing the houses of peace. And not only are we doing houses of peace, but 
we're praying for peace, shalom peace, not just any peace, shalom peace to be on our neighbors' homes, on our neighbors' houses. So they could become homes, right? So there's peace in their home. So there's prosperity, there's healing, there's love, there's um, deliverance. Uh, deliverance. There's all that good stuff, protection, protection inside of that house, which yeah. makes it a home. Wow. Well, so that's what makes it go from a house to a home. A house to a home is the peace. Mm -hmm. And then, then he when he when he then when he was talking about if it's not worthy, then take it back. And I was thinking, you know, it's easy to want to take it back. You know, I know we all have had a neighbor maybe once in our life that <laughs> we would like to take our peace back. You know, but in this movement of what we're doing is we're wanting each house in our neighborhood to be worthy of the peace. Mm -hmm. So we're claiming in this movement in New Orleans, in our region, that each house is worthy of the peace. Yes. Because if it's not, then there's going to be turmoil in that house, which is going to be turmoil on my block. Mm -hmm. Which I was I was thinking of, you know, children just really get me, right? Especially if I'm talking about a house, a home, and uh, uh, you know, children. Children not getting their needs met. And I was looking at Mama Kelly, thinking about that little baby that was murdered in her hand. There was no peace between the two homes. And it would be easy to take our peace back, right? And I'm not challenging to Jesus's word. I'm just saying where we're going is we're taking the first part of the scripture and blessing these homes to put the peace in there. Because if there had been some harmony, there would have been some shalom peace, this yes. baby would still be alive, this little girl. Mm. Then in Mark 4, 39, and Jesus said, awoke and rebuked the wind. He, but you know what? He, what hit me was he said, wake up. Before he rebuked the wind, before he took dominion over a storm, before he sent Shalom out, he said, awake. And I think that that's something we all have to do is we have to wake up before we take a storm. Like really be awake to who he is, what he is, how he has given this to us. To, to speak it, declare it, and believe it. When he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. How many storms are on our blocks? How many storms are in our region? At any moment, there's a storm in someone's house. They're not getting along. They're fighting. They're, they're, you know, there's turmoil. But Jesus doesn't just say, be, Jesus doesn't just say shalom. He says, be still. And all wind ceased. And there was a great calm. which means the shalom hit. So it's like, if I'm going to take these two, when I walk in these houses, walk in front of these houses, when I think of these houses in my mind to walk in front of, what do I need to say? I need to say peace. I give to this home. Peace, be still. And allow the calm to take it. So it can become a home. And what happens? People wake up. And if people wake up, then they're not asleep doing what they shouldn't be doing, whatever that is. If that's doing nothing, if that's doing too much, if that's sedating themselves, if that's not seeing their spouse, if that's not seeing their children, whatever it is. But we all need to wake up. 
And then Jesus said, why are you so afraid? Have you have no faith? And I was thinking about all the miracles. We do just like these people in the Bible, okay? Like all the miracles that God has done in our lives, all the miracles we've seen God do in other people's lives, all the miracles we've had been a part of, in, especially in this little tribe right here. I mean, we for 12 years, we've been laying hands on people. We've been rebuking. We've been praying. We've been sending peace. We all know the miracles that have happened just in our little lives. And he says, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? I got this. Believe what you've seen. Believe the testimony of the other. Believe your tribe. Believe your family. Believe the other Christians in this world. I got this. I got this city. I got this salt. You know, the, the report just came in that it's going to be Push back later. I said, this thing's not coming. I got afraid and I was like, I had to repent because I got afraid. I'm like, what's going to happen? Of course, the thing that I got afraid about it was the swimming pool. <laughs> what's going to happen to the swimming pool? <laughs> I got to make sure we got money in the bank for the swimming pool. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, what am I afraid of? God has it, right? He's telling me right here, I can send the peace to the river. Send it to the river to protect every home in Louisiana. If Jesus is word and he lives in me, we can send the peace, the shalom and be still and send it down the river. It doesn't matter if it rains. It doesn't matter what happens. We have the voice to, for it to be still, to move, whatever needs to happen. I don't care how he does it. Move the salt, make the salt turn into mud. I don't, it's none of my business what he does. It's none of my business what he does in a home, how he makes it peaceful. That's not my business. My business is to speak his word, to send him there. Then in John 14, 27 through 31, you know, peace I leave with you. He says, my peace. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world do I give to you. And let your heart not be troubled. Neither let, the, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you will, you will have rejoiced because I am going to the father for the father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. Well, we all believe this has already happened, that he's with, with God. And it's like, here he is saying, I am leaving all of this peace that I have on earth right now. All the peace that he had to walk on this earth, to do and for people to reject him, not believe him, not listen to him, torture him, reject him, beat him, murder him. How much peace did it take for him to walk this earth? And he says, all of that, I give to you. I'm going to leave that with you. And I want you to take that and I want you to speak over every house. I want you to send it down the river. I want you to send it to your bank account. I want you to send it to Janelle's mom and to Janelle and her family that have to make hard decisions and to watch this awful thing that's happening. I want you to send it to your family that's suffering. I want to send it to your family that's not working well, whatever that means. What is he saying to us? All of that I give you. I give it to you. Are you going to take it? 
And are you going to speak it? Are you going to believe it? Are you going to trust it? Even though you can't see how it's going to manifest? How are you going to break the fear? We're going to trust him on what he's already done. Because if he's done it once, he can do it twice. If he can stop murders for 12 days, he can stop murders for 365. I wouldn't even know. Yeah, of course, I don't want to have any murders, right? But I wouldn't have thought that it would have stopped out of the blue for 12 days. It's like, okay, so now that he's done it, let's do it again, Lord. We'll take another 12. Yes. We'll take another 12, Lord. We'll take another 12. We know it's you. We do not deny it. We do not deny it. We know you did it before. You'll do it again. So it's like when I was reading the word and just seeing, I felt like he was just saying, you're my house. Then you have a house and they have a house. I want you to be a home for me. I want your house to be a home for me. And I want their house to be a home for me. And there's no storm this big or as big as the Mississippi. It doesn't matter. I got it. But you have to do what I did. I always think about when I got sober. It's like people say, well, how you how you stay sober for 40 years? I do what they told me to do. That's what I did. Now, you know, they said, do this, I did it. They said, do this, I did it. They said, do this, I did it. But you don't stop doing what they told you to do. Just because you did it once, you don't stop it. So it's like, I don't just speak peace once. I don't speak peace twice. I keep doing what he said to do. It's like, I remember when Moses was little, he used to say, I would be putting something together. Mom, did you read the directions? (laughs) I'm like, no. He's like, mom, I think you should read the directions. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to read the directions. (laughs) That's really your father's job. (laughs) I'm just trying to put it together for you before he gets home. But it's, you know, we have the directions. You know, God gave Leon the word shalom. And it's been building and building for the last three or four years as, uh, you know, and just been just, you know, chewing on it, believing it, saying it with more revelation, with more revelation, with more revelation, with more revelation. And it's like in this, I remember Pastor saying, Pastor Thompson saying that uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin would preach on a topic for a year, one topic for a whole year. Sometimes preach the exact same thing, but the Holy Ghost would hit. And it's like, you know what? The Holy Ghost needs to hit over and over and over. And, you know, if it's his word, we're not going to get tired of it. It's just like you read the word over and over and over and you see something different every time. It's like in this, you know, I just, it was so powerful when he was like, I'm going to lead this piece. I want you, I'm going to leave it to you. I want you to leave it at the house. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, Lord, I got to leave it there. If I take it back because they are unworthy, which I understand, but we're not even going in these homes. We're just praying for them. We're just sending it in. So it's like, okay, Lord, we're going to send it in. We're going to keep sending it in. We're going to keep sending it in the same house over and over and over. And then as my life gets easier, I get to take a second block if nobody if nobody adopted it. I was telling, we were at the um, church yesterday and I said, if you live on Clearview, you know, Debbie and uh, Darren, they took the whole thing. <laughs> They took the whole street. I said, you got somebody praying for you. But if you live there, they can use a little help. But they took the whole street. I mean, they're prayer warriors, you know. But I said, we just asking for a block. But if you're one of those, you can take the whole street. That's fine with us. So it's like in this, you know, the simplicity of it all, I think things get very lost. 
It's like, can it be that simple? Yeah, I think it can be that simple. I know one of the things if I don't, I remember when we were with, when we were doing the uh, parade, yeah, uh, and we were, you know, doing from Chalmette to the quarter, and remember it was going to rain, 85% chance, well, we prayed it away, and I never thought about it again, right, and so at the end, Andy was like, it didn't rain, and I was like, yeah, of course it didn't rain, I said, we prayed that off, yeah, I know you prayed it off, he said, yeah, but I kept having to pray it off, I'm like, well, I prayed it once, that was it. I spoke the word. That was it. I'm not thinking about it again. I got other things to do. Be people to be with. People to be with. And Fernando, you know, the little camera guy. That happened before when I prayed, and you know, God took the rain away. And it happened this time. And when the day, when he got in his car, he he texted me, said, "Holy cow, you did it again!" It started to pour right when I got in my car. <laughs> and I think God God probably had to pour just on his car. I'm telling you, just to show him that the word of God works, right? Um, because of course, God loves him so, right? And in this, it's like. When we do it and we just stay consistent with it and we allow God to do his job and we go about what we're supposed to be doing, we're supposed to be loving the people in front of us. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be loving the people that need us to love them, that can't see us. Like today, we got Martha. You know, and Patty, my best friend, and and Ruth, her mom and dad, you know, they need a lot of love. I'm not, I can't see them. I send them taxes. I let them know I'm praying for them that, you know, I was going to say it on here and all that. But it's like in that, I pray for the ones in front of me and I pray for the other ones that need me. That's what my job's to do. I'm to speak it, have faith, be not afraid, don't have the solution. And move on to what I'm supposed to be doing in front of me. Because when I'm in the fear, then I'm in the problem. Mm. I'm trying to figure out how to, how is this going to happen? How is God going to make the salt go away? Okay, well, the, the mountain's got to do something. The, the water's got to do something. The rain's got to do something. I don't care what God does. He can bring the water from the bottom. He can bring it from the top. He can take his hand and move it on. He can turn the whole salt into mud. I don't care what he does. It's none of my business. My business is to speak peace over it. I think sometimes we get so caught up in the how. Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. It's too much. I'm not a supernatural you know, I'm not God. <laughs> I believe in the supernatural. I believe he can use it through me. But there comes a point when there's me. It's always like in a relationship, you got to know where you are, when you end and they begin. Okay. It's a big thing in, in counseling to teach people. Where do I end and where does he begin? Okay. Because a lot of times we get way over here and that I, I needed to be over here in my space. I don't need to be in his space. Okay. Well, when we do that with God, what am I, what's my job and what's God's job? If I'm doing God's job, he don't have to. He got a lot of things to do, you know, but if I do my part and let him do his, things are going to happen. You know, if I pray for somebody, I don't have to see the miracle. I mean, of course, I would love to see the miracle. I would love to be a part of the witness and the testimony of what God did. But I don't have to. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me, okay, you're going, if you do this, you're going to see it. No, he told me to lay hands on and they will be healed. Okay, that's all I'm supposed to be doing. That's it. I speak peace. Done. And he says here, if it doesn't, if it's not there, well, take your peace and keep going. Right. But I'm not going in these homes. I mean, maybe there'll be a few people you get to go in, you know, then, you know, you got to pray double. <laughs> OK, that house, God, that piece came right on out with me, Lord. Send it back in, Lord, you know. But, you know, in this, I think that. It becomes that formula for us. This is what he wants us to do. 
and just allow it to be what it is and not make it more complicated than that. And when the fear jumps on me and tries to tell me something else, like, oh, we had murders after, right? We still don't have the police chief. We still down to 800 and some police officers. You know, there was another murder in, on Bourbon. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's not my business. My business is to speak peace down Bourbon Street. My business is to speak peace down all the streets in New Orleans. My, pe- my thing is to make sure there's peace on those streets when Ron is on there on Thursday nights. You know what I'm saying? That's my job. And sending angels, you know, that's my job. So, you know, I felt like God was saying, trust me. I haven't forsaken you. I haven't left you. I haven't left your city. Doesn't matter who's turned their back on me. That has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. How many people turned their back on Jesus and he still went back to the same city? And he stayed for 40 days. That blows my mind. And he loved. And he loved and he loved and he loved and he proved the truth of who he was. And then he rose again. So it shouldn't even be an an agnostic. Because he came back. He didn't have to come back, but he did. Today I was, why I watched, I was, you know, just really trying to get inspired. It's like, okay, God, you know, what do you want me to do? And TV's my thing, movies, my thing, shows are my thing. God talks to me. And my favorite show, my favorite movie is A Patch of Blue. And it's a very, very sad movie with uh, Sidney Poitier and Elizabeth, I think her name's Elizabeth Hartman or something. And she's blind and very abused and very neglected. And Sidney Poitier becomes her friend. And um, I was watching it today while I was reading the word. And it was like, we all get abused and neglected in life. We wouldn't need God if we did, didn't. Like, how are you going to walk this earth with other human beings that are abused and neglected themselves? Like, we're not going to get, that's not going to happen to us. Happened to Jesus, why wouldn't it happen to us? He just shows us how graceful it was to do it on his way. And when I was watching it, I think I cried so much the first two times about certain issues that this time I saw different things. And there's, you know, and God rescues her. Sends this beautiful, confident man that happens to be black to rescue her. The love he had for her saved her. And her ability to love, even though she was constantly neglected and abused. And it's like, that's what's going on in our families all over the place, Are these houses. What more could they use than Jesus Christ walking in those homes? If they look like us or don't, it's none of our business how he wants to do it. We know he comes in dreams to the Muslim people every day. He can go to our little sweet people in our streets. He can send angels. He can send neighbors. He can send the mom, the dad, the sister, the brother. It doesn't matter. It's none of our business, but he can do it if we send him. Because he told us to do it. This is what he told us to do. So it's like we become the rescuer of every abused and neglected family. I mean, what more would I want in my world than to be that? To help another human being that's suffering and no one sees that I have the power to send Jesus in that house. 
I mean, I don't know what more would we want. Mm -hmm. And this, this tribe that we have, we know how to speak the word. We're voice of the kingdom. <laughs> God named us. I mean, Dean wanted to call us white, honey. I don't remember. Oh, he's not telling y'all the truth. Would you want to name this ministry? Tell the truth. Uh, Christ Community Center. <laughs> and Moses and I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Moses was like, dad, no. And so <laughs> the three of us prayed and prayed. And we came up with Voice of the Kingdom between the three of us. And it is so the word of God, that that is who we are. We are a voice for his kingdom. And this was named 12, 12 years ago or more. And it just, as time goes on, the, the name of the ministry is even more important and more powerful. Yeah, it's true. It is. I mean, to think how much we have the ability to do by speaking his word, becoming the kingdom, speaking kingdom, believing it and being on one accord. Yeah. You know, just to add something, it's interesting, you know, doing counseling, again, all kinds of people that come. So, so it might be, you know, a wealthy couple that lives uptown that are struggling. It might be a guy from the bywater that's all tatted up from head to toe. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, a lesbian couple that's coming for, mm -hmm. for help. It could be uh, someone that's struggling with drugs and on, a young, young person that's on opiates, you know, just a variety of people. What everybody wants is the same thing. Yes. They want peace. They do. They want shalom. They do. And I think God has given us the privilege and the assignment to give that in the way that he's instructed us to, to the people around us. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we, we speak shalom, we speak peace over our neighbors. But I think, I think it would be blown away if we really saw what happens in the spirit mm -hmm. level when we do that. Mm -hmm. I think we'd all be really surprised a lot more than whatever insights we have about that. But I think I think if we got to see what God actually does when we mm. do that, it would we would we would do it all the time over everybody because right. I really believe that there's so much that's transacted in the spirit level when we speak that, and that's the desire of everyone. Right. I'm hurting. I want healing. I want to be seen. I want peace in the mm -hmm. deepest part of myself. I want to be reconciled with who I am and I want to be reconciled for what I've done and what has been done to me. Yeah. And I want to find that place of peace. Yeah. And God has given us a key how to do it in the spirit almost an anonymously among many other ways, you know, but that's been the divine privilege that we've been given mm -hmm. and we're releasing it. You know, we're up to almost close to 115 official houses there's a lot more but people have signed up and that's being released all over our region mm -hmm. you know and it is having impact it's yeah. having impact so it's beautiful yeah i don't know what time it is i did good yeah you did good yeah yeah you finished or are you still um I guess you're still I mean, rolling. I know. <laughs> I just, you know, um, I would just say that, like, I'm very visual, so, um, like, I see Jesus walking into their house, and all I think about when Jesus walks into my house, what happens? You know, the light is bright. There's no darkness. You know, so I just visualize the light is bright and there's no darkness, which means everything has to flee. So whatever works for you, that would be what I would want your activation to be is that, you know, taking it from a house to a home and however you see Jesus in the Shalom peace helping 
your neighbors and the homes that you are have chose to adopt um that I really challenge you on doing that with such um such heartfelt love that if it was your home or a home that you know of that has been tattered with sadness and neglect and abuse that how you would want Jesus to handle that mm. that you do that with that kind of heart when you're sending it into these homes. Yeah. Oh, amen. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. I'm a little, I'm a little deep, I guess. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, amen. We, we're going to, uh, give you a chance to give if you'd like to give tonight. Uh, Venmo's voice of the kingdom. Uh, PayPal Voice of the Kingdom Dash New Orleans. You can text to give as the instructions say 833-485-0694 and text the word give to that number. Or you can hit that QR code. And we bless all, all the offerings that are offered to the Lord's work this evening. Yes, indeed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.